The hospital was very innovative. We had many firsts. The first private hospital in the country to do a heart transplant. The first uh, grayscale uh, ultrasound scanner for uh, prostate ultrasound. The very first flight for Lifeline. The first cardiac cath. Julius Goodman. Grayscale ultrasound equipment for the body. The aortic balloon. A lung transplant in uh, 19. Some of the first developments in our age disease. Like really so bad. And Rich Graffis, who. The first betatron to a private hospital. The liver transplant. The program. first linear accelerator. The carotid operation. Harry Sedaris and John Pittman. First CAT scanner for the head. The ventricular assist device. Heart transplantation. Heart assist uh, going here. In Indiana, and then even in Hal Halbrook, so we had the as first well. postpartum board. First MRI scanner for the body in the state. The uh, kidney transplant program. The first radiation simulator. First cat scanner for the body. First uh, lung transplant. Uh, Jack Hall. Well, we were the first hospital in the in the state to do coronary bypass surgery. Our urogynecology program was the first accredited program in the nation. The first inpatient hospice care unit in the United States. It's been a story of continual progress and innovation and uh, restlessness. Methodist Hospital is more than a place of healing. Methodist is a commitment to provide the very best in health care, compassion in its delivery, devotion to its patients, and dedication to the God we serve. This institution really, from the time it opened its doors in the early 1900s, had a vision to provide excellent care for its patients, to provide teaching and learning opportunities for students, and to engage in research to generate new knowledge and to produce another generation that could stand on their shoulders and look to the future. The old Newtonian phrase of I discovered this because I was standing on the shoulders of giants is palpably uh, true uh, when it comes to Methodists in this history. The lighthouse that sits on top of Methodist is a, a great symbol of what the hospital uh, stands for in that it's a shining light of hope for a lot of poor and disadvantaged patients that come for us for care and it also in a way kind of lights the way for all the medical trainees that come here and take the knowledge that they get here and spread it out throughout the state and other places. Methodist Hospital, of course, it was a private hospital, but it was dedicated to medical education. It was an opportunity to work with really excellent surgeons and medical doctors who really knew how to take care of patients. Well, a lot of our teachers were volunteer faculty, uh, which means they had to love to teach. Uh, or they wouldn't be here doing it, and I think that made a huge difference. They just had outstanding good doctors who were willing to give a lot of free time to teaching. They were not reimbursed for that, and uh, uh, they were very competent and, and terrific teachers and dedicated uh, to the, the efforts of medical education at Methodist. Jack Hahn uh, was a young, aggressive hospital administrator, and when you went to him with an idea, whether it was to start the cath lab or to uh, uh, start the clinics, if he thought it was a good idea, he supported it and then found a way to pay for it. There was many, many times we went down early on Friday morning on payday to get our check from Blue Cross so we could make payroll. And we were truly a non-for-profit hospital in those days. 
as a faculty member here, we had uh, tremendous uh, residents. They came from all over the United States uh, to train here at Methodist. The dynamics of the training here were wonderful, and it's one reason I came here. We got a, a lot of the best uh, talent uh, wanted to train here because it was a busy, busy hospital with a lot of things going on. And the more we, busier we got, the more we attracted that kind of person. Everybody was so quality and so driven and so dedicated to the institution and, and their craft. One of the happiest days of my life was when Dick Campbell called me and asked me to be a resident here at Methodist. Uh, I called, called home, uh, called my wife, called my parents. Uh, yeah, so it was a great day for me. I remember the day that I got accepted, I made a phone call to my father, and, uh, who's not in medicine. And I, I said, uh, Dad, if I told you that I just got accepted to the best hospital in the, in the country, would you have any idea where I was talking about? He said, Methodist in Indianapolis. I said, you're right. <laughs> I've seen uh, several generations of physicians through Methodist. Uh, one of the foremost uh, physicians, uh, Dr. Jack Hall's son, came to internal medicine residency. Uh, Dr. Pittman, the cardiovascular surgeon, his son came to surgery. And uh, my son started as a college student uh, working in the animal lab, uh, doing animal research as a student. Our family uh, has had three generations that have uh, trained uh, uh, at Methodist. My father and his brother, me and my brother, my son, a nephew, and then a daughter-in-law. My, uh, my uncle was president of the medical staff uh, in the dark ages of the 20s. And my dad, uh, in 1955, president of the medical staff. My aunt, uh, Peggy, was president of the uh, White Cross Guild. I had a brother who uh, trained in pathology at the institution. Um, a daughter, uh, Audrey, who's now an obstetrician gynecologist, who spent a medical school rotation over here. So our family uh, uh, is not unique, actually. There are other families like this. One of the uh, early things that Dr. Hall and I discussed was we wanted to make sure that the people on the units, on the wards, uh, recognized the resident and the intern. And uh, with that, uh, I designed with Dr. Hall's help, uh, the patch that uh, the house staff became known for. Uh, and, and being an Army person, uh, patches were uh, a part of my bringing up. The, uh, the patch was uh, designed to, in, to make every effort to designate that they were Methodist people. The relationship uh, between uh, the preceptor and the, and the student was quite remarkable. Uh, it obviously was a, was a professional relationship, a, a teacher, a mentor, and a student. We got to be with them one-on-one -on -one for eight hours a day for a whole month. You come in in the morning and you look forward to being here. Um, it, it wasn't the type of high-pressure, um, um, competitive-type learning. You know, the doctors didn't just say, I'm going to run over to the hospital, see some patients, run back to the office. They came, they stayed with you, they nurtured you. The nurturing that occurs with your educational program is something that develops your, your, your character. I remember how gentle and kind most of the people that I worked with were, and yet how excellent they were. You know, I, I did the best job I could and I was uh, always hoping to uh, gain their respect and I'd, I'd go the second mile. The bedside manner, uh, dealing with tough situations, delivering bad news, all of those things you got to see um, over and over again from different people and there's just no replacing that. One of my first images of Methodist Hospital, it's burned into my memory, I will never forget this, is that um, Frank Lloyd, who was CEO of the hospital when I was a, a medical student and a, and a resident, I remember him walking the halls at one in the morning 
I'd, I'd be on call going to the emergency department or doing something. And there'd be Frank Lloyd walking down the hall. And he'd stop and he'd talk to the janitors who were shining the floors or talk to the unit secretaries. I just thought that was amazing. And, and you know, he knew the names of almost everybody in the building. You were on the front line taking care of patients with a phenomenal specialist as your backup. The uniqueness of the training in family medicine here was uh, the amount of patients that you got to see and the amount of procedures and opportunities that you got here that you didn't get in other training programs in the city or the state. You saw everything and felt very comfortable with all types of uh, 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 patients from the very uh, infants all the way up to uh, centurions. That you would actually scrub in and do part of an operation and actually help take care of the patients. It was a, a, a ground, a proving ground, where you could see how they performed and how good they were. They provided the staff with ongoing employees or, or colleagues better, uh, and uh, many of them went into practice with us. When I was a senior resident, something new and unexpected came along and that was Lifeline Helicopter. It sounded like it would be a great deal at the start. It sounded exciting and it was because I hate flying and, and I just, I never could relax when we were more than a couple of feet off the ground. We had uh, one pilot who had come out of Vietnam and flew almost every flight like it was a combat mission. And so when we took off from the top of the building over there, not the pad we've got now, but the little one that was like a postage stamp, um, we shot straight up to four or five thousand feet, cruised there, and then as we approached the hospital, it was like we were going into a hot LZ. I mean, we just plummeted in. And of course, that made me so much better. I mean, I, I focused, I think, sometimes more on whether or not I was going to be able to complete the flight than what I was supposed to be doing. They had a sense of wanting to pay back what they, somebody had given them. We were very enthusiastic students. Then we go on to become enthusiastic teachers and perpetuate the, uh, the system. And it's very unique, I think, to this place. I remember so many people who I consider real big people in the field, and they were, took time to teach me. So I was one of those who wanted to try to spread some of it back to the younger people. Many of the residents would come back and say, you know, a lot of the things you taught me I really could use when I went out to practice. And, and that makes you feel very good when, when people tell you that. At Methodist Hospital, the people were extremely uh, friendly and, and helped you in any way they could. And, and uh, the atmosphere was nice. I uh, got to know them on a personal level. I think all programs try to do that, but it was easier, I think, in our environment. It was very satisfying. You'd have lunch together or dinner together or you'd go to your faculty member's home for a, a get-together. I remember going to Jack Hall's house for a big Christmas party for the, the faculty and staff. Um, and we planned a lot of social activities together. And so, you know, the doctor's lounge in the morning was a great time to see all the different guys and gals and uh, it, it was just a real family atmosphere. Um, and it was just, it was a fun time. We went bowling. I remember bowling. Because I remember one resident couldn't let the ball go when he started rolling down the aisle with the ball in his hand. It, it was a magical time. It was, the camaraderie and fellowship was so great. Elaine Pittman Habig and Bob Habig met here had their first date as residents and got married. They were married by a minister that Elaine resuscitated. On he opened, a, She opened the uh, elevator door and the minister fell out and she coded him there and resuscitated him and he later married them. We had an animal lab which was unu very unusual for a uh, private hospital. First we had it across the street where we did those open hearts at the beginning and then we had one actually on campus and uh, when people weren't looking uh, uh, on Capitol Street, they'd be leaving in some calves or some, uh, some pigs and things like that. Unfortunately, they, nobody ever noticed, but uh, we were very, very busy doing uh, 
fairly complicated operations in that animal lab, which again was very unusual for a private hospital. There are many core values that we share. Uh, the most obvious one is that patients come first. Uh, we are servants in a way, uh, just as Hippocrates was. Everyone was uh, uh, dedicated to uh, providing outstanding patient care and, and uh, worked well uh, with each other. We all realized that we had to take care of this patient and that meant that different services worked together to do it. There's a marvelous award, uh, the Ebner Blatt Award, that's given to residents who um, embody the, the virtues and the, the humanness, the kindness of, of that uh, physician. And that's one of the most pro prized uh, awards that is given. I think if you look at the Methodist trained primary care physician, you look at the Methodist trained surgeon, you look at the Methodist trained subspecialist, I think the people that went through this program have a little something extra a little extra sparkle, a little extra edge. And there was this esprit de corps, this can-do attitude that was like nothing else I think I've ever experienced and, and, and a pride in a sense that, yeah, we want to take care of sick people here because that's what we do. That's what Methodist Hospital is. Medicine is a never-ending, continuing medical education endeavor. You never stop going to school. And one of my teachers was Dr. Bill Gamble. The night that he died, and I think he was 90 years old, if I remember correctly, he was doing continuing medical education on the computer and was issued a CME credit for the time that he spent the night he died at 90 years of age. We were together all the time. We woke up in the morning and rounded together at the end of the day, uh, we played together, we played golf together, we played cards together. It was an enormous, uh, ongoing family. I feel very happy to have had the opportunity to meet all the people that I did and, and develop these ongoing relationships. To be able to have trained here, learned here, and then stay here for the next 25 years, that, that's a huge honor and a privilege, I think. It is with a lot of pride that I ran the program for 20 years. Oh, it has been such a privilege for me to be at Methodist. Well, when I think back of the history of the uh, institution and uh, the graduates of these programs, uh, they have s uh, several things in common. One is they um, left something behind in terms of quality patient care. They were excellent residents. Um, secondly, they uh, came back and they uh, participated in teaching and research to generate new knowledge and to produce another generation that could stand on their shoulders and look to the future. When I look at some of the pictures of the folks that were here over the past hundred years and uh, where we were and where we've come, I think they would be proud of the continued tradition of training that we put on, all of the medical innovations that have happened here, and just the spirit of caring uh, and compassion that continues to be practiced in these halls every single day, just as it was when the place began. I am so proud of the outstanding job that the young people that are uh, leading Methodist Hospital are doing now. They were great interns and residents, and they turned into fantastic leaders. And that, that gives me more joy than anything.